Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, today we are going to have a relatively short talk about cardiac tumors radiology. Originally this talk was, uh, I made it to, for the International Day of Radiology, the last one. However, due to circum certain circumstances, I didn't get to give it. So I think now it's a good time to give it. So it was previously for the International Day of Radiology. First of all, when you are looking at a cardiac tumor, keep in mind, the primary tumors are rare, 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 okay? Most of the tumors are secondary, which can be either metastatic or they can be direct extension from a primary tumor. Yeah, you see a lung extending into the uh, heart or esophageal, esophageal carcinoma extending into the heart or, meta or metastasis, okay? 40 times the secondary tumors are more common than primary, 40 times. So before you say primary cardiac tumor, think 40 times more of secondary ones before you say primary cardiac tumor, okay? And even in a primary cardiac tumor, keep in mind, the benign are much more common than the malignant, okay? So fortunately, cardiac tumors, most of them are benign. But the benign and the malignant are less common and yani rare to be primary. Most of them are secondary. Okay? Uh, there are different imaging modalities that can help us in this regard. First of all, we have the echocardiography. Echocardiography is limited by the acoustic window. In cases of transesophageal echo, invasiveness. It's, it's a little bit invasive transesophageal echo. So, eh, not that easy to do. While CT and MRI, it can display the intracardiac, extracardiac extent of the tumor. The, there you can have multiple planes of imaging, making it very nice for demonstration of the special relationship of the mass to the cardiac and mediastinal structures. MRI can provide assessment of functional parameters. Like for example, if there is my, a valve regurg, like mitral valve regurg, like cuspid valve regurg, stenosis, uh, the pressure gradient across the valve, all of this can be evaluated using MRI. So it's very nice to have anatomical and mechanical uh, uh, assessment of the tumor. Uh, benign primary cardiac tumors, as we said, 80% of the cardiac tumors are benign. Although they do not metastasize or invade, okay, they can lead to significant morbidity or mortality by causing arrhythmia, valvular obstruction, or embolism. So, benign cardiac tumors, benign, it's good. No, it's not. Because although they don't metastasize, they don't extend, they don't destruct, they don't invade, they are benign tumors, but they can cause cardiac problems like arrhythmia or obstruction, leading to severe morbidity and mortality. The most common benign cardiac tumor and the most famous one is myxoma, cardiac myxoma. The most common tumor, it accounts for 25% 20 of the masses, cardiac masses, 75% it's in the left atrium. So, uh, it's just very common to say left atrial myxoma, that's well known, left atrial, left atrial myxoma. Okay, however, it can, be, can happen in the right atrium in about 20% of the cases. It's like any benign tumor, spherical in shape, may vary during cardiac cycle because it's gelatinous, okay? During systole, diastole, can vary. Left atrial myxoma, it's usually attached by a narrow pedicle to the area of fossa ovalis, that's the interatrial inter septum. A narrow pedicle attaches there, okay? Uh, and can have a wide base of attachment to the atrial septum. Sign MRI, you know the uh, like a movie, like a cinematic de demonstration of the tumor, uh, can evaluate the tumor motion, the site of attachment of the tumor, and the movement of the tumor in the cardiac chamber, whether in the left atrium or in the right atrium. Okay, it usually uh, uh, demonstrate intermediate signal intensity on T1 weighted images, hyper intense on T2. So it's intermediate hyper, in uh, hyper intense, like most of the benign tumors. However, 
if it have very low signal intensity can be uh, can be observed left atrial myxoma sometimes can have low signal intensity very low signal intensity okay and they show post contrast enhancement for example in this case you can see there is something here okay it's in the which chamber of the heart this one it's in the right atrium in this case, which is less common. It's about only 20-25% of the cases in the, in the right atrium. Okay? And you can see it in systolic and diastolic, attach, uh, the, the movement and the location and the size of the tumor. Other uh, common, relatively common tumor, which also benign that affects the heart, is what's called lipoma and lipomatous hypertrophy of the atrial septum. Uh, it's the most common benign tumor. Can be large size without causing symptoms because lipoma is a soft flexible pliable tumor most commonly it's in the right atrium or the atrial septum like any lipoma it has a broad base of attachment it has a fat signal intensity that's hyper intense on t1 hyper intense on t2 it suppresses on fat saturated images okay usually does not have septations fine few fine septations also can be seen and like any lipoma, it does not enhance after contrast, okay? Uh, the lipoma and lipomatous hypertrophy of the atrial septum should be differentiated from intracavitary lipoma. It's a different entity, okay? Uh, the fatty tissue is not encapsulated and infiltrates through the tissue of the atrial septum. It's just fat in the atrial septum, okay? In the intraatrial septum, fat there, make it lipomatous hypertrophy not lipoma like intracavitary lipoma okay for example you can see here before fat sat uh, saturation this is the left atrium and this is the right atrium it's more common in the right atrium as we said you can obviously see the uh, hyper intense t1 signal on t1 uh, standard uh, sequences and after fat saturation you can see the uniform homogeneous suppression of the fat signal intensity okay uh, another rare benign primary tumor is called what is what is what's called by papillary fibroelastoma okay fibroelastoma it's a benign primary cardiac tumor usually attaches to the cardiac valve okay symptoms are usually related to distal embolization of thrombi okay because of their high content of fibrous tissue they have what Low signal, fibrous tissue, okay? It's the same here, fibro, fibro, elastoma. Fibro, elastoma. So it's el elastic fibers, okay? Uh, sign MRI will be important here to assess the effect of the valvular tumors on the valve function and the papillary fibroelastoma may be distinguished from myxoma on the gradient uh, echo MRI sequences by signal intensity slightly lower than the myocardium compared with iso intense signal from myxoma. Myxoma is a muscle tumor so it will be iso intense to the muscle while fibroelastoma has a fibers in it so it should be less than the muscle low okay can anybody remember where is the most common location of fibroelastoma in the body in the body where is exactly in the muscles of the back exactly muscles of the back is a very common location of fibroelastoma mostly uh, the latissimus dorsi muscle it happens there very common again it can be seen in the heart okay not the same tumor fibroelastoma uh, another uh, cardiac tumor it's uh, very common in children is the rhabdomyoma okay and it's usually associated with tuberous sclerosis so if you see a rhabdomyoma in the heart in a child look for tuberous sclerosis and look for other findings of tuberous sclerosis which is like what angiomyolipomas in the kidney brain looking for cortical tubers retinal angiomas and in case of females look for lamb for lymphangiomyomatosis in the lungs these are the associated findings of uh, exactly associated findings of tuberous sclerosis okay they vary in, they vary in size and usually multiple characterized by intramural location involved equal equally involved the left ventricle and the right ventricle so it's in the ventricles usually left or right 
Rhabdomyoma may demonstrate signal intensity similar to that of normal myocardium on the spin echo images, uh, hyper enhancement after administration of contrast medium. Okay. <clears throat> Another benign tumor is the fibroma, which is the most common benign cardiac tumor in children. Unlike most primary cardiac tumors, does not display cystic changes, hemorrhage, or fat necrosis, just dystrophic calcification. So in fibroma, you see dystrophic calcification. You do not see uh, cystic changes or hemorrhage or anything like that. Okay. May cause arrhythmia and can be and has been reported to be related with sudden death. Okay. Uh, most often occur at the within the septum anterior wall of the right ventricle can reach a large diameter hypo intense to the surrounding myocardium on T2 because it's fibrous fibroma okay and ISO on T1 images and the fibroma should usually show delayed enhancement at the periphery of the tumor like any fibrous tumor okay the delayed enhancement can take up to 20 minutes after contrast injection also has been observed differential diagnosis uh, of intramural masses uh, in children is rhabdomyoma versus fibroma one of two either rhabdomyoma or fibroma if you see cardiac mass in child think of two rhabdomyoma or fibroma okay if it is solitary if it has a low t1 signal intensity delayed enhancement think of fibroma if it's multiple huh, high signal intensity on t2 Rhabdomyoma is more, and you should think of what? Tuberous sclerosis. Exactly. Multiple, it's rhabdomyoma. Think tuberous sclerosis. Solitary, fibroma. Okay? The presence of dystrophic calcification goes with what? Fibroma. Presence of hemorrhage, cystic de uh, degeneration goes with rhabdomyoma. Okay? You can see in this case before uh, contrast, you can see a big mass here. And you can see the mass enhancing after contrast, delayed, okay, suggesting fibroma. If I told you this is a child, if I tell you this is solitary mass, if I tell you it's in the ventricle, you think of fibroma, okay? Pheochromocytoma can be seen uh, also the common locations are in the posterior wall of the left atrium okay uh, you can see it also behind the ascending aorta along the coronary arteries can be in or, or around the left atrium most are located outside the cardiac chamber and the average age at diagnosis is 30 to 50 years so it's in young adults relatively adults cardiac pheochromocytomas are usually benign okay Like any pheochromocytoma, everywhere in the body, it's highly vascular, which means hyper enhancement or post contrast images. Average size is about three to eight centimeter at diagnosis. So they are hyper intense to the myocardium on T2 weighted images and ISO or hyper intense on T1 weighted images. And when you give it contrast, they will show strong signal enhancement because of its high vascularity. Okay? The enhancement may be heterogeneous with central non-enhancing area related to tumor necrosis. Like here, this is a mass here, and you can see a light bulb enhancement after contrast injection, indicating possibility of him uh, of pheochromocytoma. Hemangioma also can be seen in the heart, uh, can be divided into cavernous uh, papillary or uh, venous uh, types. Calcification can be easily identified on CT, يعني flea bullets, like any hemangioma everywhere in the body, flea bullets. You can see some calcific fossae, okay? Hemangioma may involve the endocardium, myocardium, epicardium, and can be found in all chambers and may also, uh, can be seen in the pericardium. Hemangioma typically demonstrate high signal on T2-weighted images, intermediate to high on T1, just like hemangioma everywhere. It has fat in it. So it can be intermediate, can be hyper-intense on T1 uh, weighted images, and usually uh, can be hyper-intense on uh, T2 weighted images. Uh, can have inhomogeneous signal intensity and usually show intense post-contrast enhancement. Like the example in this case, you see on the T1 image it's hyper-intense, okay? On the T2 fat sat also it's hyper-intense, and on the post-contrast images 
you can see it's enhancing compared to this one hmm? and on the gradient images also you can see the hemangioma obviously seen okay malignant primary cardiac tumors one quarter of the primary cardiac tumors are malignant okay uh, like sorry uh, sarcomas accompanies the largest number heart muscle the heart is made of muscle so sarcoma is much more common than other tumors okay and the other uh, cardiac benign uh, sorry the other malignant cardiac tumor uh, are cardiac lymphomas the features of malignant tumors the fe if you see these features think of malignant okay malignant cardiac tumor it's most commonly one of the two either sarcoma or lymphoma what are the features first more than one chamber you see left atrium left ventricle right atrium left atrium two ventricles three uh, chambers okay extension into the veins pulmonary veins arteries or vena cava white point of attachment to the wall necrosis within the tumor extending outside the heart is a very strong indicator of malignancy hemorrhage hemorrhagic pericardial effusion combined intratumoral and intracavitary lesion how do we know this is a hemorrhagic intracavitary lesion uh, sorry uh, hemorrhagic pericardial effusion it, on the t1 you'll see it hyper on the t2 you can see it intermediate or low according to the age of the blood so if you see not pure fluid signal intensity in a pericardial effusion think of hemorrhagic pericardial effusion think of malignant cause for the for the effusion okay for example you can see this a lymphoma uh, t1 po uh, fat sat post contrast at the level of the right atrium right ventricle you can see the mass invading the right atrial cavity and ventricular wall this is the mass this is the right atrium and the right ventricle it has a wide base of attachment involving more than one cardiac chamber this is strongly suggestive of malignant cardiac lesion okay Another malignant cardiac lesion uh, in adults, the most common is the angiosarcoma, usually in men aged 20 to 50 years old, okay? Has been divided into two clinical pathological forms. Most frequently, angiosarcoma found in the right atrium, okay? No evidence of Kaposi sarcoma found. Kaposi sarcoma is a form of angiosarcoma. So it's angiosarcoma, not Kaposi sarcoma. This is the first form. And the second form, involvement of the epicardium, pericardium in the presence of Kaposi sarcoma. <coughs> so they are small, localized, and asymptomatic. Kaposi sarcoma is associated with AIDS, acquired immune deficiency syndrome. So we see a case of Kaposi sarcoma, think of AIDS, usually they are small, multiple. If you see just one angiosarcoma, no signs of Kaposi sarcoma or any acquired immune deficiency syndrome, think of just angiosarcoma, okay? On the T1, usually demonstrate heterogeneous, okay, uh, signal intensity of the tumor, focal area of high signal intensity, presumably presenting hemorrhage. If you see hyper intense signal in the tumor on T1, think of blood, hemorrhagic, okay? And the T2, it's usually high signal intensity, hypo intense on gradient recall images, significant phase shift, representing susceptibility effect caused by intratumoral hemorrhage, <coughs> angiosarcoma. Yani its name is angio, so it must demonstrate enhancement, good enhancement, okay? Some of them show low signal intensity on both T1 and T2. It's like, like some sort of fibroma, okay? These, uh, these areas can have high signal intensity on gradient images representing vascular channels. They call it cauliflower appearance. You can see areas that are hypo-intense on T1 and T2 and uh, hyper-intense on gradient echo images, okay? Causes of diffuse pericardial infiltration have been found to show linear hyper-enhancement along vascular channels described by some authorities as sun ray appearance, okay? This is a case of angiosarcoma. You can see it involves two chambers of the heart Okay, atrium and a ventricle, and you can see obviously extension outside the heart, which is a very strong predictor of malignancy. Okay, rhabdomyosarcoma and other sarcomas are very common in where children again arise anywhere in the myocardium, they are usually often the signal intensity is variable, maybe ISO, 
on T1, on T2 at the images. Areas of necrosis can be seen like any other malignant tumor. Patchy enhancement and uh, extra cardiac extension to the pulmonary arteries and the ascending aorta can be seen. Okay, you can see as in this case, you can see this mass here involving more, one than, uh, more than one cardiac chamber. The mass here is showing enhancement and uh, pericardial effusion, you can see it also that it's not enhancing. So pericardial effusion mass involving more than one chamber suggesting malignant lesion. In a child, think of rhabdomyosarcoma. So, other possibilities like fibrosarcoma, lyomyosarcoma, liposarcoma, they are very rare tumors. Don't put it in your top differential, in the last of the differential, okay? Signal intensity uh, are non-specific. The most, most of them show signal intensity, iso intensity to normal myocardium on T1 and hyper on T2, okay? Otherwise, nothing significant. Typically, they show post-contrast enhancement. Lymphoma, the other common malignant cardiac tumor, primary is less common than secondary cardiac lymphoma. Usually represents spreads of non-Hodgkin lymphoma, okay? Primary are often in immunocompromised, and it's aggressive. Primary cardiac lymphoma, think of immunocompromisation, and usually it's aggressive. Early chemotherapy, since lymphoma, whenever the lymphoma is aggressive, chemotherapy is effective, okay? Usually in the right side, especially in the right atrium, large epicardial effusion, uh, sorry, large pericardial effusion is frequently present, accompanying pericardial thickening, lymphoma, and thickening due to lymphomatous infiltration, okay? Lymphomas may appear a hypo to myocardium on T1 with images, hyper on T2 with images, homogeneous, heterogeneous enhancement of the tumor, depending on the presence of necrosis. Most of the lymphomas, they do not show necrosis early in the course and usually show homogeneous enhancement if it's large it might show some necrosis it might show some heterogeneity of the enhancement this the most common cardiac tumors as we said in the beginning are secondary cardiac tumors okay so either direct extension from intrathoracic tumors like mediastinum for example esophagus or from the lungs or extension of abdominal malignancies through inferior vena cava into the right atrium like renal, adrenal, you know, the renal cell carcinoma extension through the IVC into the heart, or it can be metastasis, can be direct extension from adjacent tumors, okay? Like, uh, the, the extension means unresectable tumor. Whenever there is a tumor extending to the heart, it means the tumor is unresectable. So you should report cardiac extension is seen from the non cardiac uh, uh, lung malignancy or bronchogenic carcinoma or esophageal carcinoma, evidence of extension in the heart is seen because this indicates non-resectable tumor. Okay? So it's a very important thing. Mediastinal lymphoma can infiltrate, uh, infiltration of uh, invasion of the pericardium can change the stage of the tumor, which is very important in malignancy in general and in lymphoma in particular. MRI can clearly show the extension of the tumor into the cardiac structure, any evidence of hemorrhagic or non-hemorrhagic pericardial effusion, and the veins also can extend transversely into the cardiac chambers through the venous, uh, the, the, uh, card the pulmonary veins, uh, tumors, tumor thrombus can arise from carcinoma of the kidney, liver, adrenals, extended through the inferior vena cava into the right atrium. How do we know this is a thrombus, not a, uh, so this is a tumor thrombus, not a bland thrombus, usual thrombus? First of all, enhancement. Second, if you do a Doppler, you can see vascularity within the thrombus. If you see a vascularity, blood vessel, in the thrombus, or you see enhancement, think of tumor thrombus, okay? Which can change the staging and the approach to the management of that particular tumor. Carcinoma of the thymus can also extend into the superior vena cava, okay? The evaluation of the possible attachment of such tumors into the atrial wall is mandatory for surgical planning. If the atrial wall is not infiltrated, complete resection of the tumor is still possibility. The most common lesion to be found in the heart is metastasis, like from melanoma, leukemia, lymphoma, other tumors. 
they frequently metastasize to the heart. Any malignant tumor in the body can metastasize to the heart. So keep that in mind. Okay. Whenever you do abdominal ultrasound, just angulate the probe just a little bit toward the heart. We are not an echocardiography specialist, but it won't hurt you to just look at the cardiac chambers for a few seconds. You might see some thrombus, some pericardial effusion. Sometimes you can see a mass. It will be a very nice thing of you to report. Okay. Melanoma has the highest frequency of seeding into the heart and are frequently found in the uh, heart of uh, at autopsy. You can see this case, there is a metastasis to the left atrium. You can see this mass here in this case. Okay. Intracardiac thrombus are uh, the cardiac thrombus is very common intracardiac mass involving most frequently the left atrium or left ventricle. The problem is that it can be difficult to differentiate it from a tumor. A lot of times we see intracardiac thrombus and it can be can cause uh, shooting of emboli into the brain and can cause CVA and things like that. Okay? Is this a tumor or just thrombus? Okay? And the, the problem is that the signal intensity of the thrombus can vary from low to high according to the age of the thrombus. So it has a different uh, T1 and T2 signal intensity, which makes it even more difficult. If it's fresh thrombus, it has high signal intensity on T1 and T2. Older thrombus has low signal intensity and T1 and T2. Okay? Intracavitary high signal causes uh, caused by slowly flowing blood may be difficult to distinguish from thrombus. However, this problem can be overcome by either using uh, uh, sign MRI. Okay? How to differentiate? Gradient echo is very sensitive. Use gradient echo images to differentiate is this a thrombus or a tumor? Okay, because cardiac thrombus will show low signal intensity due to the hemocytri and things like that, while a tumor will not. Okay, an exception to this is fresh thrombus, it can have high signal intensity. Most of the thrombi you will see are old, not fresh. Okay. Tumor tissue is usually hyperintense in comparison with the myocardium on the T2-weighted images. MRI, uh, some exomas can contain iron, show low signal intensity and mimic thrombus. So, if you see low signal intensity, can be myxoma, but most likely it will be a thrombus. Okay? Another method to differentiate between a clot or a thrombus is using contrast. If it enha enhances, it's a tumor. If it's not or less enhancement, it's... Uh, mostly in favor of thrombus. For example, you can see here in the left atrial appendage, there is a mass like something here. And again, on another case, after contrast, this does not enhance, this enhance. So, in the case, this is thrombus, this is a metastasis or tumor. Okay? And that will be all. Thank you very much.